Hey Frag fam, Corbin here again from Northwest Scent. Today we're going to be talking about my top five fragrances from the house of Parfums de Marly. So I'm sure a lot of you guys know about this house. It's a very popular house on the niche side of things. It's a good entry level niche house, I would say. A lot of their fragrances are very wearable, somewhat mass appealing, and that's why they're so popular. And not only that, they do have a wide spectrum of fragrances. I can't remember off the top of my head how many there are, but I want to say there's at least 15 on the men's side, probably more than that. And I have tried most of them. I own seven in my collection, but again, this video is gonna be about my top five. So if you guys are interested in hearing about these fragrances, please stick around. But first, let's roll that intro. All right, welcome back. So like I said, my top five fragrances from Parfums de Marly, I own seven and I enjoy all of the Parfums de Marly fragrances I have, but it made more sense for me to do a top five list rather than a seven list, for example. It's just a nicer number, so that's what we're rolling with. And I do wanna say that I have tried over 20 different fragrances from this house, and these are my five favorites of everything that I've tried. I, of course, the two that I own as well are in my top seven, that's why I have them in my collection. But again, it just made more sense to do a top five list. Additionally, I just need to reiterate this. These are my top five. So I'm not saying these are the most mass appealing fragrances from this house, because again, some of these you guys would probably not enjoy. These are just my five favorites that fit my taste. So with that out of the way, we're gonna jump straight into the number five spot. So starting us off at the number five spot, this one is Parfums de Marly Lipizan. And this is one of the fragrances that I was hinting at in the last clip that I don't think that a lot of people would enjoy, at least as much as I enjoy it. This one, as you can see, it's in their clear bottle line. These are the Eau de Toilettes. So they're a little bit weaker in concentration, although I still get decent longevity from this particular fragrance, about seven hours, which is very respectable for the style of fragrance that this is, which this is a Sheepra, and I think it's actually a Woody Sheepra. So that's the classification. This one came out in 2009, although it smells fairly dated. It smells like something that came out of the 80s or maybe even the 90s. And I just enjoy it because I enjoy, again, these like old school style fragrances. I love citrus aromatics, woody sheepras, sheepras, fougeres, anything like that. I really enjoy those a lot. There's just a sophistication to them that really intrigues me and kind of fits my style. And that's what this fragrance is. So it's a sheepra, so it has dominant notes of cedar. There's some citruses in here. And then of course, oak moss. That's kind of the requirements for a sheepra. You also do get some clary sage in here, which is an aromatic flower. It kind of gives you sometimes vibes similar to lavender. I think in this case, it's not quite in that lavender territory, but it kind of hints at that. There's also some thyme in here and then tarragon, which really increases the herbaceousness. And you almost get like a licorice vibe from that tarragon in this fragrance, but there's so much more going on in here. You get gardenia and rose. There's some other florals in here. And there's a lot more than that too. There's even a little bit of cardamom in here, giving this kind of a nice spicy backbone. It is on that fresher side. It's not like a heavy, dense, resinous cardamom note, but I think it fits this style of fragrance perfectly, which this is on the fresher side. I should also mention that there is a dominant leather note, which is definitely more on the animalic side and not like the clean suede style of leather. So that definitely makes this go in a little bit more of the challenging direction. Again, it's in the dry down, so you don't necessarily get that right out of the opening, but I still really enjoy it a lot. Fragrances like Tuscan Leather Intense, um, what is it called, African Leather from Memo Paris, those kind of feature the same style of dirty leather, and I really enjoy those fragrances a lot. So I think it works in this fragrance very well. Again, I am not saying that this is mass appealing because I don't really think it is. It does smell somewhat dated, very gentlemanly, and just old school. So if you like something that's kind of down those lines, an old school style fragrance, a Sheepra, but maybe a little bit more on the challenging and daring side, you should really check this one out. It's definitely a unique fragrance from this house. You don't see anybody talk about this at all. I would say this is at the bottom of the barrel as far as fragrances that are popular from this house. So a nice hidden gem for like the old school lovers of fragrances. Again, that was Parfums de Marly, Lip is on. So next at the number four spot, we have a cold classic from this house. This is a really nice fragrance. And honestly, most of you watching this that have tried this fragrance would probably put this higher up this list than I'm putting it. Again, this is a rank list and I just had to put it where for me it sat. And for me, this is at the number four spot. This one is Carlisle. 
So a really, really nice fragrance. And I understand why for some people this is their number one. It is on the very strong side and it is a little bit more situational. So I'm not gonna get quite as much wear out of it because of that, but I really enjoy it a lot. And again, that's why it's in this list. So this one only has six notes. You have green apple and then nutmeg in the top, tonka bean and rose in the mid, and then patchouli and vanilla in the base. And for me, this is a very patchouli and rose heavy fragrance. I get a lot of that dirty yet sweet, almost chocolatey patchouli, not quite, but it's kind of hinting at that. And then the rose here, it is very prominent. It is a little bit on that powdery side, but I do get a little bit of this jamminess from it as well. And as I've said before on this channel, I am not a huge rose lover, which I think that might be part of the reason why this one isn't just like my absolute favorite. I still really do enjoy it a lot, but it is a little bit on that floral side and that like heavy jammy side, which for me, traditionally, I'm not a huge fan of. There also is very dominant nutmeg note in here that is on that drier side, but I do get a little bit of the green apple. It adds just a bit of freshness here, kind of like this crispness to it. And then that vanilla is just kind of in the back, sweetening things up. And I think it is on that spicier side rather than that creamier side. So this is a very dark, spicy, kind of jammy floral fragrance. And it's so high quality. I cannot knock it for that because it does smell basically as much as you're paying for this, which I think retail, it's about $370. Don't pay that much. Of course, you can find this for under 200 discounted uh, in particular on Facebook. So definitely go that route. A phenomenal fragrance, but it had to go somewhere on this list. And for me, it's at the number four spot. So again, that was Parfums de Marly, Carlisle. So we're finally cracking into the top three and these upcoming three fragrances are the ones that I wear quite a bit. They make it into my regular fragrance rotation a ton. And these are the three again that I reach for more than the other four that I have in my collection. So starting off the top three is this one right here called Sedley. So this is my favorite fresh offering from Parfums de Marly. I've tried Greenly. I do want to get a bottle of that. I need to familiarize myself more with that fragrance. But for me, based on the sample of Greenly that I tried, and then of course owning this fragrance, I definitely do prefer this one. I do have Percival as well, which is another great fresh offering from the house. Although that one isn't quite as unique. We all know about how it smells similar to some other uh, cheaper designer fragrances. It's obviously much higher quality and does smell better, at least to me. But again, just from a uniqueness standpoint, that one makes it a little bit lower down on my list because of that. This one is a lot more unique in my opinion. And when I first picked this fragrance up, it absolutely blew me away for multiple reasons. So starting it off, this is a 2020 batch, which was reformulated from the original 2019 release. I never owned or tried the 2019 release, but from all of the reviews that I've seen people say about it, they would say they would get like four hours, maybe six hours at best. For me, the first time I wore this fragrance, I'm not kidding when I say that I got 24 hours of performance on my skin, not on my clothes. So for a whole day, I could smell this thing coming off my skin. Obviously it wasn't projecting the entire time, but I could still detect it a day later, which is really impressive for this fragrance. So they definitely did something when they reformulated it, making it a lot more beast mode. And speaking of that, we need to get into the scent of course. So this thing, again, very fresh. It opens up very citrusy. I think there's mandarin, orange, lemon, bergamot in here. There's some grapefruit as well. So you get like four different citruses in here, which is crazy, very fresh opening. There also is mint in the opening, which isn't there so much as like a detectable scent, at least for me. But where you really notice it is when you spray it on, you get this kind of icy feeling, especially when you're smelling it. You can almost feel it in your nose. So for me, the mint comes across like that. There also is geranium in here, which traditionally does come across a little bit minty as well, kind of aiding in that icing cooling effect. And for me, those just make this thing a lot more cooling and refreshing, perfect for the high heat. This also does have a more sophisticated side. There's lavender in this fragrance. There's also some rosemary, which rosemary, at least to me, usually comes across quite crisp, a little bit spicy, but very green. And then of course, lavender, it's very aromatic. And I think they both work amazingly in this fragrance. So this doesn't come across just like your trad traditional blue shower gel kind of fragrance. Those aromatic notes really do kind of aid in this thing going in more of a classy direction and a little bit more of a sophisticated direction, which just aids in this thing's just well-roundedness in my opinion. You also do get some cashmere in here and there's even like cedar and vetiver. So there's a lot going on in this fragrance. One thing about it though, is that it smells amazing. I couldn't imagine anybody disliking the way this smells. Maybe there's some people that aren't impressed with the way it smells, but you'd be hard pressed to find somebody that would smell this and be disgusted by it. Like this has that ease of wear to it. 
And like I said earlier, it is quite unique. There is one other fragrance that I've tried that does kind of give me similar vibes to this fragrance. Although I do believe this one came first and the fragrance I'm referring to is Boss Bottled Infinite. And I have talked about that fragrance before. And basically how that one comes across is just take this DNA, twist it around a little bit, but also add this kind of spicy sweetness from the apple and then the cinnamon. And that's kind of what you get with Boss Bottled. Again, I don't think they smell the exact same, but they're kind of in similar territories in the same ballpark. But this one to me is much, much better. I would reach for this 10 times out of 10 over Boss Bottled Infinite. And I absolutely think this one is worth the money. So again, at the number three spot, a really impressive fresh fragrance from Parfums de Marly. This one is Sedley. So coming in at the number two spot is what was at one point my favorite fragrance from this house. Of course, the fragrance at the number one spot has edged this one out and put it at the number two, although it is a close second. This thing smells phenomenal to me. In my opinion, one of the best offerings from this house, no doubt. This one is called Leighton Exclusive. So if you look at the note breakdown for this fragrance, it's really strange. It looks just like a jumbled mess of notes. And if you pay attention, there's only one remaining note from the original Leighton, or at least one remaining dominant note. So if you're familiar with Leighton, it's known for four main notes, which are cardamom, green apple, lavender, and vanilla. It's aromatic, sweet, spicy, kind of fresh at the same time, but not very fresh. This fragrance has that original Leighton DNA in here. Although again, this only has the vanilla from the original. According to the note breakdown, they have taken out the cardamom, they've taken out that green apple and that lavender, but I still get that very dominant and just signature kind of DNA in this fragrance. So in my opinion, they've kept them in. Maybe it's just a falsified note breakdown to discourage cloning of the fragrance. I'm not really sure. But again, I still get, get that DNA here. What has been changed around though is they've toned down that sweetness quite a bit and they've amped up this kind of animalic woodiness. So this fragrance has some Laotian oud in it. There's also civet. And then there's some dried coffee beans in here. So it comes across very earthy, again, woody and a little bit animalic, but it's not like a fecal animalic. It's more of like a, I would call it like a musky kind of animalic note. And for me, it just works in this fragrance. Taking that already sensual DNA from the original Leighton and then just adding these animalic touches and this like dried kind of earthy coffee with that oud, it just takes that DNA to the next level, just brings it up. I absolutely think this is an amazing fragrance. It, obviously, it has edged out the original Leighton. I think this is much a much better fragrance. I think for most of you watching this, you would probably still prefer the original Leighton. I'm not gonna say that this one is more mass appealing. I don't think it is. The original Leighton is definitely the more mass appealing of the two. But for my personal taste, this is the better fragrance and it is phenomenally done. There is nothing else out there that smells like Leighton Exclusive. So, a phenomenal fragrance from the House of Parfums de Marly. My number two, again, that was Leighton exclusive. So we're finally at my number one fragrance from the House of Parfums de Marly. Can you guys guess which one this is? If you've been watching my channel for a while now, you might have seen that I did a review on this fragrance and I talked in that video, of course, about how this was my favorite fragrance from this house. So if you're a newer uh, viewer though, maybe you missed that one. This is a great fragrance in my opinion. Not most people's number one picks. Honestly, this isn't very popular with many people, but for me, this thing is perfect just for my style. Every time I wear this, it just puts me in an amazing mood. It has this warm, sensual, just enveloping goodness to it. It gives me a nice big old warm fragrance hug every time I wear it. And every time I do wear it, people around me don't hesitate to say how good this one smells. This one is called Hobdon. So this thing is just a perfect, I would say fall fragrance in my opinion. If you're looking for something in the house that is similar to this and probably a little bit more on the mass appealing side, certainly the more popular side, I would point you towards Wajon. That fragrance does share some similarities to this one. That is like a warm apple pie gourmand kind of fragrance. This isn't quite in gourmand territory, but it is kind of teetering that border between gourmand and I would say not a gourmand. So this one does have green apple. There's also caramel in here. So those are both definitely gourmand notes. And to me, this just smells like you're eating a caramel apple walking through the woods with like these flowers and spices growing around you. So there's dominant woody notes in here as well. There is some uh, rose in here, if I'm not mistaken. And there's also a dominant note of saffron. So 
To me, the saffron is definitely on the spicier side and not like the sweeter side. It's not the style of saffron that you would see in something like Baccarat Rouge 540 from MFK. This one is definitely on that drier, spicier side. There is a dominant woody note in here as well. So it comes across as just very woody, dark. There are some florals again in here, like I said, roses. So to me, again, this really puts me in the mindset of in the fall time, eating a caramel apple while walking through the woods and there's like spices and these flowers growing around you. And you're kind of just getting wafts of all of this kind of mingling together. It smells absolutely amazing. A perfect fall fragrance in my opinion. Again, I wouldn't say this is the most mass appealing because it is on that very dark, dry, woody side and there are some florals in here. But for me, it just smells absolutely amazing. I think Chaos Fragrances has said that this is his favorite fragrance from this house as well. And I agree with him. This thing smells so good. This is definitely one that I recommend you guys check out and get a sample of. I, I'm not gonna say that this is gonna be your favorite fragrance because I doubt that for most of you, this would be your favorite fragrance from this house, but I could easily see this making it into people's top five lists if they gave it a shot. I think for most people, this is one that they haven't been able to try and that's why it doesn't get much talk. So give this one a shot if you guys can, get a sample and I think you guys might really enjoy it a lot. So again, my number one fragrance from the House of Parfums de Marley, that one was called Hobdon. Well, there you guys go. Those were my top five fragrances from the House of Parfums de Marley. Be sure to let me know down in the comments section what are your top five fragrances from this house. Assuming that you've tried five or more, I'd be really curious to, for you guys to let me know. Even if you only own one or two, just let me know which one you guys have and why you really enjoy those fragrances in particular a lot. So if you guys enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate dropping a like just to show your support. And then that way more people can see my videos. Additionally, if you wanna write that comment or just let me know any other thoughts you have, as well as maybe some new video ideas or topics that would be great too and since you're down there doing all that stuff if you've not already if you could hit the subscribe button and then the bell notification that would be amazing that way you stay up to date on new videos whenever they get released going forward but with all that out of the way that's all I really have for you guys today so I hope you have a good one stay healthy stay wealthy and smell great